بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. so today إن شاء الله we're covering the name of Allah al Hakam and al Hakim. al Hakam meaning the judge and al Hakim meaning the all wise. now with regards to al Hakam it only occurs one time in the Quran where Allah says بعد عرض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. أف غير الله أبتغي حكما وهو الذي أنزل إليكم الكتاب مفصلا. Allah says say then is it other than Allah I should seek as a judge, because Allah Ta'ala is the ultimate judge, while it is He who has revealed to you the book uh, explained in detail? So in other words, Allah Ta'ala is the one who sent this uh, perfectly well-explained, clear, miraculous book and Qur'an and revelation, and therefore He is the ultimate judge. And so we have to take Allah Ta'ala as such. Uh, and what's interesting is that another word that's very closely related, related is Al-Hakim. Al-Hakim is a word which means the judge, but it's a very generic term because it can refer to either a good judge or a bad judge. It doesn't really clarify what type of judge, it just means a judge, al-hakim. But what's interesting is al-hakim, the, the, this name of Allah that we're dealing with, al-hakim means a praiseworthy judge, a great judge, a good kind of judge. So subhanAllah, this is the, the term that Allah Ta'ala used for himself, which is a little bit more specific. The second name I want to talk about is al-hakim, and this shows up a lot in the Quran. And it shows up next to so many different names of Allah, and each time it shows up next to, next to one of the names of Allah, you can see how both of them are complementing each other to paint a very beautiful uh, uh, picture, you could say. And so first and foremost, what does Al-Hakim mean? Al-Hakim, according to Al-Tabari, he says, Rahimullah, he says, Al-Hakim is the one who mistakes don't enter into, into his planning. Mistakes won't enter into Allah's planning because he is Al-Hakim. And Ibn Al-Qayyim, he says that Al-Hakim means uh, Allah's actions are purposeful and they are all interconnected as well uh, and they're done to perfection. This is such a beautiful concept. The idea that yes, maybe I do something purposefully. Let's say I go to my, I don't know, my garage and I'm building this and I'm building this and I'm building this and someone comes and says, why are you building all these different things. I'm like, oh, I'm building this because I'm passionate about making this and I have a reason for that and I have a reason for that. But what if at the end of that I told you, oh, and by the way, they're all interconnected. That is going to complement that, which is going to complement that, and so on and so forth. They're all interconnected. SubhanAllah. That concept, you'd be, you'd be so much more impressed with me. You'd be exponentially more impressed with me that all, not only am I working on all these different, impressive, uh, very uh, intricate and detailed projects, but they all have some sort of a connection with one another. You'd be like, oh my goodness, this guy's like a mastermind, right? Now, this never happened, by the way, but I'm just saying that SubhanAllah, Walillahi al-Mathalu al-A'la, Allah Ta'ala obviously has the highest of examples, uh, uh, but SubhanAllah, uh, you can imagine that not only does uh, is Allah Ta'ala uh, perfect in his purpose and in his planning uh, uh, and everything that he executes, but in addition to that, you find that there's an interconnectedness between uh, his judgments as well. Now, furthermore, the trilateral lateral root uh, of ha and uh, kaf and mim, uh, or the verb hakama yahkumu, ultimately goes back to the concept of prevention, to prevent, to withhold, to restrain something. Now, why is that the case? Well, because a judge will tell you, listen, this is my verdict. So of all the different possible actions you can take, you're going to have to stop all others and this is what we're going to do. You know, you're going to you know, either be, go to jail, be detained, or you have to pay this amount, whatever the case is. So two people come to you and they are, they're fighting, they have all these different ideas, I want, we want this, I, well, I want this, I want this. Well, the judge, what? He prevents all possibilities and only gives you one way forward. So you can see how prevention fits into the concept of a hakam or a, a good judge. And furthermore, when it comes to al-hakim, Allah Ta'ala is wise. And how does that, what does that have to do with prevention? Well, the idea is that a wise person knows one right decision and avoids all the alternatives. Right now, I could be jumping up and down, I could be rolling in circles. I could be, I don't know, uh, hitting myself. I, you know, there's all these, there's all this potential of what I can do. But inshallah ta'ala, hopefully, I'm trying to exercise wisdom by doing the best thing, which is hopefully go through these, uh, go through these uh, names of Allah, go through these lectures. So this is the same concept. Uh, uh, of course, Allah ta'ala has the highest of examples, but still you get the idea that uh, subhanAllah, this is what it implies, that wisdom is to have lots of options, but to pick the best one and prevent yourself or, you know, mana'a, to withhold yourself from all the other, uh, uh, you could say, numerous or even infinite possibilities and Allah knows best. Now, this name of Allah occurs 94 times in the Quran. So Allah Ta'ala really emphasized, 94 times Allah Ta'ala is emphasizing Al-Hakim, who He is, that He is the most wise. Now, what names of Allah does this name occur next to? The most is 46 times uh, Al-Aziz Al-Hakim, Aziz Hakim. So, Al-Aziz meaning the most mighty, most powerful, uh, 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 and, uh, and the, the ultimate authority, and then Hakim meaning the wise. So why do these two come together? And specifically, why in this order? Why always Aziz first 
and Hakim second. Well, the reason they come together is because Allah Ta'ala has perfect power, but at the same time, He knows how to use it. See, some people, they know how to do things, but they don't have the power to implement it. They, they, they theoretically know how to do it, but they don't have the power to actually implement it. Or others, they have lots of power, they don't know what to do with that power. SubhanAllah, Allah is Al-Aziz Al-Hakim. He has all power and He knows what to do with it, SubhanAllah. But why does it start with Aziz and then go to Hakim second? Well, because one interpretation one, and one explanation is what? Because power is something that's very obvious. It's something that you notice directly. And then only later on do you have the, you know, you think about it, you contemplate it, and then through reflection you realize and then you develop the knowledge of understanding what was behind that powerful action. Something happens and obviously you see what took place. You see the power of Allah Ta'ala demonstrated in front of you when something happens, but then you wonder, okay, but what was behind this? What was the wisdom? And that comes secondary, the understanding, the appreciation, the, the, the master plan, you could say. Uh, this is secondary. So it's so beautiful that Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim, they come in that order. Now, what about the next one is uh, Al-Hakim al Al-Alim uh, and also Al-Alim Al-Hakim, both. You find that both uh, uh, these names of Allah, they come in two different orders. They, they occur 37 times in the Quran, but they come in different uh, orders. Sometimes Al-Alim Al-Hakim and sometimes Al-Hakim Al-Alim. Now, why this combination? Well, because it's combining all information. Allah Ta'ala is Al-Alim, He knows everything, and He, uh, but at the same time, He has the will to best use that information. See, people like us, we have, may have lots of information, but we don't know what to do with it. We don't know how to implement it. Or even if we know how, we don't have the will to actually execute it properly. We get lazy, we get distracted, whatever the case is. When it comes to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, SubhanAllah, He knows everything, and then He also has the will to use that information in the best possible way. The next one is Al-Hakim Al-Khabir. Al-Hakim Al-Khabir, which come together four times in the Quran. And the implication here is what? Is that uh, uh, one interesting thing is that you know, uh, hikmah, wisdom, can come from an indirect source, right? Sometimes, you know, oh, I had a very wise father or grandfather that used to impart all sorts of knowledge uh, upon me, and he got it from his experience, and then he taught it to me so that I didn't have to make his same mistakes, or I didn't have to go through what he went through. I just learned from him. Whereas Allah Ta'ala, so that's a possibility, right, in terms of human beings. But when it comes to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, Allah describes himself as Al-Hakim, which means that he has all wisdom, and Al-Khabir, that means he didn't get it from some secondary source, rather he is the one who you could say uh, has first-hand experience and first-hand knowledge of everything, uh, uh, um, uh, not, not learning from some other, um, let's say, previous source. And that's why it comes from the word Khibra. Khibra means experience. It's to deal with something uh, uh, directly. And SubhanAllah, uh, we'll talk about this later uh, when we talk about the name of Allah, Al-Khabir. Uh, but it's a very, very beautiful uh, name of Allah. And the implication is what? That Allah Ta'ala has all uh, experience of things that have happened and things that haven't happened. Like imagine, you know, if I, if I choose a certain path, if I do something, then I'll learn what that path, uh, you know, entails. I'll, I'll, I'll learn the experience of going that way. But then if I, you know, if I chose one path instead of another, then I'll never gain the experience of the other possibility, right? But SubhanAllah, with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, it's, it's, uh, Allah Ta'ala has first-hand knowledge of all possibilities, the ones that are actually, that, that do take place in this, in this life, and uh, uh, those that are just still possibilities uh, in the realm of Allah Ta'ala's knowledge. And so SubhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala has all, you could say all of it is like first-hand knowledge because it's in Allah's knowledge. So SubhanAllah, this is what it means to be Al-Khabir, SubhanAllah. And when you put these two together, Al-Hakim, Al-Khabir, what this understands is that Al-Hakim represents the wisdom with which Allah Ta'ala operates this universe, whereas Al-Khabir represents Allah's knowledge of what is the potential of what could have happened had Allah Ta'ala ran things a different way, i.e. how everything could be used if he decided to run creation otherwise. It's the inner knowledge uh, as opposed to the obvious or the outer. SubhanAllah. So uh, this, this combination is very, very powerful. The next one is Al-Ali Al-Hakim. Uh, Al-Ali meaning the most exalted, the most high, and Al-Hakim meaning the most wise. This particular, uh, uh, these two names of Allah, they only occur once in the Quran, in uh, Surah 42, Surah Shura, uh, Ayah number 51, and it's coming in the context of revelation. Why is that the case? Because it's talking about Allah Ta'ala communicating with humanity, communicating with His prophets and messengers, which fits the context because Allah Ta'ala is infinitely high above us. He's Al-Ali. He's infinitely high above us. And so you'd think someone so far away is completely detached from us. And yet, He sends 
messengers. He, well, he sends Jibreel uh, 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 to convey his message, and then he sends through these messengers through revelation. They come and they convey uh, uh, Allah's truth so that we can live in a, in, a, in a wise way. So we're not so detached from Allah that we don't have any wisdom. We don't have any knowledge of how to live our lives. Allah sends this revelation and does so in the best way. So subhanAllah, you see the combination between both, that he is infinitely high above humans, yet he communicates his revelation to us so we can live correctly instead of living uselessly, so we can live wisely. So hence, Al-Ali, Al-Hakim, both come together. Furthermore, uh, uh, once in the Quran, you find that Allah Ta'ala mentions himself as uh, At-Tawwab Al-Hakim, that he is Tawwab, the one who accepts repentance over and over again, and Hakim, the wise. And this comes in the context of adultery, which is quite interesting because uh, Allah Ta'ala is saying, look, in this case where somebody accuses another person of adultery, it could be the case that such a person is truly guilty. And so the first thing you want to do is repent. Repent for uh, doing this sort of disobedience and this, this, this type of living, this type of immoral lifestyle. But furthermore, the question is, now that this has been done, how should we as human beings deal with this person? And so there are certain hudud, there are certain uh, uh, laws in place to, you know, talking about witnesses and what was it seen and uh, is the person admitting to it or uh, were there no witnesses and so therefore uh, how should we proceed? All these laws are detailed in Islam in a way that is hakim, in a way that is wise, that will best serve humanity. So whether you have done the sin and you're holding that on the inside, you should repent. And now that whatever has gotten public has gotten public, how are we going to move forward? Let's take a look at the Sharia and do so in a wise way, hence Al-Hakim, oh excuse me, hence At-Tawab Al-Hakim. The next one after that is the names of Allah, Al-Hakim Al-Hamid, which again occurs once in the Quran, in Surah Fusilat, ayah number 42. And it's in the context uh, describing the Quran, describing how the Quran is wise and also praiseworthy. Why do these two things come together? Because SubhanAllah, revelation appeals to both the head and the heart. And when I say that, the head, I mean intellectually, it's laws, it's wisdom, it is wise. But then the heart, it is emotional. It is something that is beautiful. It is something that is praiseworthy, something that you can fall in love with. So you can see how these two names, Al-Hakim and Al-Hamid, and even in the order, that first it has to make sense intellectually, and then you can just fall in love with it and, and appreciate how beautiful and praiseworthy it is. And Or another way you could say it is style and substance. Right? You know, the Quran is beautiful in style and substance. What do I mean by that? So, uh, what I mean to say is that uh, uh, what Allah says is hakim, what Allah says is wise, uh, uh, in intellectual, smart, brilliant, whatever terms you want to use, it is wise knowledge that is coming to you. That's in terms of its uh, 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 substance. But then, in terms of its style, how it's being conveyed, how it's being recited, how the flow of it uh, is and how you can draw or, and write such beautiful calligraphy. Subhanallah, this Quran and the way we recite it and stand in prayer and, and connect to our Lord with it, this is something beautiful, praiseworthy. This is the uh, style of it. And so Subhanallah, you can see how these two connect, Al-Hakim and hamid And then uh, 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 the final name of Allah that, uh, uh, that, that, that shows, with, uh, shows up with Hakim is what? Al-Wasi' Al-Hakim. And Al-Wasi' means the expansive. And the idea here is what? Expansive could refer to Allah Ta'ala's infinite knowledge and infinite possibilities. And then, although us as human beings, if we had so many possibilities, we would be overwhelmed with options and we would probably choose the wrong, choi uh, wrong course of action. And yet Allah Ta'ala has infinite possibility, infinite power, and yet Allah Ta'ala always chooses the wisest, the most wise choice, and always does the best thing, never makes a mistake. So Allah Ta'ala is Al-Wasi' Al-Hakim, SubhanAllah. So then the question real quickly is, how do we live with these names? Number one, we should appreciate Allah's wisdom in nature. Look at the beauty, the complexity in all of creation. Number two, we should appreciate Allah's wisdom in His deen, in His revelation. Look at the laws that Allah Ta'ala has implemented or, or, or given to us, have, has imparted upon us, so that we could maximize our potential, SubhanAllah. We should appreciate each story related in the Qur'an and seek the wisdom that it has for our lives. We should appreciate that each experience of your life, whether it be good or bad, has some sort of lesson in it, some sort of hikmah, some sort of wisdom. So we should turn to Allah, Al-Hakim, and say, oh Allah, how can I learn from this, what happened in my life, whether it be good or bad? And of course, finally, we should trust in Allah Ta'ala's wisdom regarding the afterlife. Trust that Allah Ta'ala will take care of you, not only in this life, but in the next. Trust in Allah Ta'ala's wisdom that when he says that the pleasures of paradise will be better than you can imagine, they indeed will be better than you can imagine. This should motivates you to get closer and closer to Al-Hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah ta'ala make us of those who constantly turn back to him and seek out his wisdom in his deen, seek out his wisdom through whatever experiences we have. Amin ya rabbil alameen. Zagla khair wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.